What's going on guys? So uh, today we're talking about a uh, SOG knife, SOG or Special Operations Groups. Uh, this one is the SOG Aegis ATXR. All right, um, I saved the uh, the box for this. Um, I got a bunch of these SOG knives months and months ago. Been kind of using them on and off here and there. Finally have uh, time to do a review on this one. Um, it's really cool. It's really interesting. I absolutely love, I have to say, across the board, the XR line. Um, they basically just took some of their old designs and just pimped them out, upgraded them, made them, you know, completely new and different. And I've been very impressed thus far. Um, but yeah, I saved this box just to show you an example because they, they all come like this where you have the knife in the uh, open position, which is really nice, nice uh, display, uh, all the information is on the box. Very simple. Um, to give you a little blurb about it and obviously all the specs actually, let me zoom in here and, and show you this. That saves me some time <laughs> explaining some of the stuff here, but of course it will go over it anyway with you. But yeah, just a cool little presentation here on the bottom. You see some specs there, 4.4 ounces. All right, it's nice they also have uh, metric as well uh, for the international series, or excuse me, international viewers. I was reading series MK3 over here when I said that. Five inches closed, 8.1 open, and 3.1 inch blade. All right, so that is that. Put this off to the side here. This is a, an assisted knife. All right, so uh, we have uh, ambidextrous dual thumb studs. So you're just pushing out on that. And there you go, blade pops out. All right, so here's a little bit of a, a close-up of it. First, let's take a look all around. Uh, what kind of jumped out at first to me is the color combination here. It's just kind of funky. It really screams like hiker. You know, hikers love big, vibrant colors, you know, in case you drop your stuff out in the woods or the wilderness where we happen to be uh, hiking and doing your thing. Uh, it's pretty cool. There is a different version. I believe this one is the Indico Green. There's also a Forest Green version, which is a little bit more subdued, a little bit more, I don't know, kind of military looking. Um, this one has like a, a gray blade, a very, very deep, dark blue. Um, it's kind of hard to describe what type of blue, but it, it almost comes across as black a lot of the time. And then we have the very vibrant kind of yellow green um, accents here. We have our backspacer which also sticks out, and that's your lanyard hole. We have obviously our ambidextrous locking mechanism. We have the safety on the back and the studs that are all the same color there. So the um, locking mechanism works kind of like an access lock, okay? You can you know, actuate that from either side or you can pull both sides, all right? Makes it even easier. Um, it's a nice little spring in there. It doesn't take too much tension, but it's not accidentally gonna be hit, all right? It's kind of a low profile lock. Um, no problems at all with, you know, grabbing that, it's slipping or anything like that. But once you retract that, of course you can close the blade. Like I said, it is uh, assisted opening, so you just push that stud out on either side, shoots out and locks. Um, the lock is a little weird on this one. It's definitely something to get used to. So once it's in the open position, it doesn't move at all. It, it locks open. Now, obviously you can see that leaves a piece sticking up. So when I first got this, my concern was like, that's gonna be super uncomfortable. It turned out not to be a huge deal. Um, and holding it like this, you don't feel it. There's no pressure. In my hand at least, it just doesn't hit anything at all. If you do a, um, a harder grip like this for you know push cuts and really hard cutting, I do feel it on the hand, but it doesn't bother me nearly as much as I thought it would. I thought it would just be sticking right in the palm and just be super uncomfortable, but it's not. Um, I prefer not to be sticking up, you know, but it is what it is. It's not uncomfortable. I haven't found that uh, it was bothering me whatsoever. Uh, I guess it might depend on your hand size. I would think that if you had smaller hands, um, maybe less padding. Obviously, I got chunky hands, so maybe that's a concern. If you have bony little hands, uh, that might dig in the wrong spot. Just depends on your hand shape and size, I guess. But for me, it was. It turned out to be totally fine, even though it was a big concern when I first got the knife. Um, in the closed position, you could see there's a little red dot in here. That would be a uh, fire, okay? Like most safeties, red means danger, means it's unlocked. So to lock this, you just push it down. Now, the thing with this switch is it has to be in one position or the other, but if you push in the middle, you can actually get this to, to rock back and forth, okay? So there's multiple positions without it actually being in one position. And it sounded confusing. Let me rephrase that. Um, in order for this to be locked like it is right now, so it does not come out, so if you want this just in the pocket, you do not want that to actually open, it has to be in locked position, but it has to be all the way down. 
All right, so it's not just like click, you know, click, click. It, it's a little um, spongier, so you can actually get this if you push this again towards the middle. You can get this in a middle position where it's not locked and it's not unlocked. Okay, or maybe it looks like it might be locked. So like if I could get this really close, push that side. So that looks like it might be locked, um, and it is, it, but it's not all the way down the button. So in other words, like you have to be, uh, you know, intentional when using this. Push all the way down until it clicks. Push all the way up until it clicks. You know what I'm saying? You can get a position where it's not quite actuated, but you can hear that click. It's very audible when it's in one position or another. All right, but just something worth noting. Because some people might want to put it in an unlocked position and go, okay, it's unlocked, and then it, but it's not quite unlocked. It's like a little bit like that. And then you go to push on it, and uh, why won't it open? Well, it's not unlocked. All right, so just really listen for the click. Um, it's not a huge concern. It's just something that I'm mentioning when I'm, when I'm unlocking the knife. I haven't had it ever accidentally sick in the middle position. It's just something that I've noticed that the, the button is not... In other words, it won't just go into both positions. There's multiple positions that lock and turn into. So actually uh, carrying and using this knife, I have to say, like I said before, I'm very impressed. Uh, I was always a fan of the Aegis. I thought it was a really cool knife. Um, but this one is, it almost seems like an upgrade for sure. The handle is very comfortable. We have some kind of grip pattern on here, but it's smooth. Don't be confused by this. This is not grippy whatsoever. It's actually nice and smooth. Um, no issues at all with any kind of hot spots or anything. Again, even with that lock sticking up or safety rather, uh, it's really, really comfortable to use. I like it. There's jimping both on the handle as well as the back of the blade, which is very purposeful. Okay, it doesn't like really lock your hand in there, but it definitely grabs that skin. All right, so if your thumb's there, it's not going to slip, even if it's a little bit, you know, wet, if you're sweating or whatever. I did carry this in the, the summer months, it's getting colder now. Now, if you look at this back spacer here, when I first got this, I assumed that this would be a problem. I thought this would give me a hot spot or something, and it never did. So this back spacer, uh, also doubles as the lanyard hole. As I said, it sticks out here in the front. And I thought, ooh, that's kind of a bad position. What if your, your pinky rubs on that and stuff? But I never had that problem. And carrying using the knife, my pinky rests against it sometimes, but there's no jimping or anything. There's no sharp edges. So I never had an issue with that, um, you know, becoming uncomfortable. If anything, it actually prevents your hand from sliding down. I don't think I was in a position where my hand was, you know, ever really sliding anyway, uh, but it turned out to not be an issue whatsoever. Uh, I do like this uh, pocket clip on here, all right? You see it's a deep concealed clip, but of course a little bit of knife is going to show, especially, you know, having that, that bright yellow-green type color. It definitely stands out. You can see it in the pocket, looking in the mirror and stuff. Um, but this carries very nice, very good spring tension on the clip, a little bit wider. Um, never had an issue with the pocket clip being uh, uncomfortable either. It just rests nicely on the end of the hand and the palm, but no hot spots at all. You can see it's set up for uh, tip up right side carry, but it is swappable to left side carry, which is very nice. Uh, making this truly an ambidextrous knife, having the double studs and having the lock on both sides, and of course having the safety on the spine. If you're a lefty, swap the clip and you won't know the difference. It will be set up exactly uh, right for you as it was for a righty. So that's really nice, having a lefty friendly knife. I know a ton of you guys out there and girls are lefty, you always uh, vocalize yourself when you like a knife, and unfortunately it's not lefty friendly. It is unfortunate, um, but the industry definitely, you know, leans to the right, <laughs> because that's the majority of people out there. Now looking close at that blade, you can see that instead of writing SOG, they actually wrote it out, Studies and Observations Group. Now I actually think this is pretty cool that they went with Studies and Observations Groups, just because SOG as a whole, for many years, has really, really integrated their logo into their knives. I mean, there's been knives where the grip pattern says SOG, 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 SOG. It's always on the pocket clip, but sometimes it's on the blade. Sometimes they had uh, some models where it was SOG like hologram across the entire blade. So it's been an ongoing joke for years uh, how they just <laughs> don't let you forget the branding because it's everywhere on the knife, which is not a big deal. In fact, it's great. You know, they have a, a lot of pride uh, in their company, and why not throw the logo all over it so people know what kind of knife it is, right? Uh, but they went in the opposite direction. Again, completely rehauling a lot of their older models coming out with these, the XR line. It's totally different, and that is just an addition to that. Um, but yeah, overall, this was a fantastic knife. They sell these for like 85 bucks. I think if you like the look of it, it's definitely worth the $85. It is a very good performing knife. Uh, focusing, well, I mean, the handle is very comfortable and everything. And if you happen to like the color combination, that's cool too. But, you know, getting down to the uh, the meat and potatoes of it, 
uh, it's all in the blade. We have a very simple drop point blade, okay, flat ground, um, and that Cryo D2, it just performs, it performs very well. If you look on the bottom here, what's nice is they cut back, so as the blade's coming down, um, it completely cuts back, and that allows for a very abrupt end, okay? So there's no real blade choil on here. It makes it really easy to sharpen, all right, from tip to heel, all right? It's a very distinctive stop point, okay, as far as, uh, you know, where that edge is, which is really nice, all right? Very cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, this slices very well. It has just a little bit of belly. Uh, has a, a cute point enough to easily pierce into things. It's not going to be like a needle. It's not like a, you know, a little Kershaw leak or something. Um, but it was totally fine. Again, for me, I'm not really stabbing into things. You know, I don't know. Some people like stabbing stuff for fun. I don't have a practical purpose for stabbing. Uh, but when I'm looking for a finer point, it's because if I'm ripping open a box, sometimes as the knife dulls out a little bit, Having a finer point allows you to pierce into that box uh, initially easier. Okay, I found over the years, you know, certain knives, even when the edge is sharp and the tip starts to dull out a little bit, you know, you need a little bit more pressure to push in. And obviously, if you're opening a box, you're probably caring about what's inside of it. Uh, and although I've never done it, there's been times where I came close to, you know, I go to pierce in the box and I'm using too much pressure. And now I've just jammed the knife, you know, two, three inches into the box and hopefully it doesn't damage what's inside. So having a nice sharp point is very beneficial in that sense. But of course, it's always a compromise. Um, the finer the point, the more delicate it is, the more likely it is to break off. The wider the point, the stronger it is, but the less likely you're gonna be able to do some of those detail work um, that you know, some people want in their knife. So there's always a good middle ground, and this is right there. It's pointy enough, but not too pointy where it's gonna be fragile. Okay, I don't think the safety is super necessary here. Um, I have to imagine if you take the knife apart, you can just take that out, all right? So if that really bugs you, but you love the knife, I'm sure that's removable, okay? Obviously, you wanna maybe contact SOG and just see if that's gonna, um, you know, uh, affect your warranty or anything. But I mean, you know, if I were to carry this long-term, which you guys know constantly, I'm, I'm changing up my knives, so I'm not going to. Uh, I do love this knife. It's probably gonna stay in the collection for a little while anyway before it gets traded. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if this is my go-to knife for, for a year, two years, whatever, I would take the safety out. I don't think it's necessary because you do need enough pressure um, to get that out. It's not going to easily pop out. You have to push on that. I don't know. There's no poundage. It's not like, you know, testing a trigger or a gun or anything. I can't really measure that, but it's not easy. It definitely takes more pressure than a lot of other assisted knives. Okay, if, you, if I'm quiet for a second, you can hear that I'm actually flicking this and it's not coming out. I can put enough pressure on there to flick it. You have to deliberately push on it to get that to initiate. Um, so, you know, just a consideration, I guess. But uh, overall, I think it's awesome. I think the original uh, Aegis was a cool knife, and I think they did a, a very good job on revamping the entire design and coming up with this this version of it. It's just, uh, it's pretty neat. And I think it's, uh, it's priced right for what it is. So, that's my opinions on this knife. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned if you like these. Uh, I'm definitely going to do some more of the SOG XR line. I think I have at least three more. Uh, the next one I'll probably do is on the Trident. There's a lot going on there and I wanted to talk about that one as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, but for now, let me know down in the comment section, do you rock an original SOG Aegis um, and or do you uh, have one of these in your pocket today? Just kind of curious what your, your thoughts are on it. Uh, but I was, uh, I was pretty impressed. I like it. I think it's a, a nice uh, version of their, their old classic. So that's all for now. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.